It is a featherweight championship showdown between Alexander Volkanovsky and Brian Ortega. While Brian T. City Ortega was 14-0 with a no contest when he ran into Max Holloway in his first UFC championship opportunity, that night didn't go his way, but a lot of people think he has all the skills and all the makeup to eventually get that belt around his waist. You don't lose, you get an opportunity to get better, and that's what Brian Ortega has to do after he lost that fight to Max Holloway. He will look to take those lessons learned in the octagon over the course of four and a half, five rounds, and apply this to his career as he goes forward. He has the skill, he has the heart, he has the ability, but now you just gotta put it all together if you wanna realize a UFC championship. And of course, if you hear the ladies screaming, that's because T-City has T -City taken his shirt build. off in the <laughs> inspection zone. Well, how about the pop as the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC featherweight champion works his way to the octagon here tonight. Yet another title defense is what's in front of him. He is healthy, he is ready to prove that all the featherweights below him are just that, below him for a reason. He believes he is the champion for a reason. He believes he should be mentioned with the all-time greats. And that is what is at stake for him here tonight. Another title defense, another chance to prove that he is one of the greatest 145-pound fighters this octagon has ever hosted. Tale of the tape for this featherweight championship fight. Ortega is 29. Volkanovski is 31. He will have a two-inch reach advantage. We go inside the octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Mergliata. This is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, it's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC featherweight championship of the world. Introducing us, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 15 wins, one loss, and one no contest. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds, fighting at Los Angeles, California, presenting the challenger, Brian T. City Ortega. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 22 wins, one loss. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 145 pounds. Presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC featherweight champion of the world, Alexander the Great. All right, this is for the UFC Championship. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, on a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, go back to your corners, come out fighting. The fighters touch him up. You ready? Misses with the straight right. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. 
Well, he's got the kicking game going tonight. Lands another one there. A beautiful kick, and all I can think of, better him than me. All right, going for the early takedown, and he gets it. So no surprise, he wanted to get this fight to the ground, and that is certainly a good... Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the core. Bottom fighter trying to control posture, unable to do so. And now he's in a lot of danger. He's got to grab that head or he's going to get blasted. All right, he's hanging out inside the closed guard of his opponent here, DC. You got to be careful. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. You got to be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Got clip with the right hand. A lot of top pressure being applied here. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Volkanovski's pass is denied. Close guard. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates distance and space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Oh, how about the speed on that reverse? Now he's chasing the triangle. And this could be trouble here. Looks like it's pretty tight. He's trying to work his head out of harm's way. It, it might be over. Now he falls back into the finishing position. Not tapping out tonight. Ooh, right into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. They try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submission. Close guard. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Ortega's just got full mount now. All right, take a seat. Now listen to me. That was a great round. I don't want you to force that submission attempt so bad, though. Okay? Stay cool. So here we are as our next round gets underway. I would have tapped in that previous round, by the way. I would have tapped. It was so tight. I cannot believe that he got out of that submission. Starting to see some of the damage cut underneath that right eye. All right, well, he's landed some good shots tonight, but there's no three-piece. There's no soda. More often than not, it's one and done. He's not even getting a combination. I mean, hey. if you're going to sit there at the drive-thru, <laughs> order a combination, take the soda with your food, give him the right hand behind the jab, give him the hook behind the right hand, jab, right hand, hook, that's two pieces of chicken and a biscuit, finish him off with the uppercut, that is your soda. I mean, come on, man, let this guy have the whole thing. So 39 total strikes have landed for Alexander Volkanovsky. And connecting at a pretty good clip thus far, 66%, the accuracy rate against Brian Ortega. Oh, nice job here staying busy off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Oh, nice job to reverse position on the ground. It was bad, but now it's not so bad. What a fantastic sweep. Keep it busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. This is where you don't want to be, though. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. 
All the ground and pound strikes continue to rain down. The opponent better move out of harm's way or the referee's gonna stop this. He better start to move. And when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. Well, as usual, suffocating work from the top here by Volkanovski. Now, the guy's attacking the triangle. He finds himself in trouble because he got a little bit lazy in the full guard. Looks like he's trying to manipulate the head. This could be tight. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Then he's out. All oh, right to the mouth. position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. Ortega is attempting to pass here, but he's denied by the defense. Oh. Oh. the end of the round as we show you some of the highlights over those five minutes. Really a clinic when it comes to the ground and pound. Yeah, man, this is what you're taught. When you're learning to become a ground and pound fighter, you want to do it exactly like he did. Gain posture, have height, control hands and wrists, land strikes, don't throw too many, throw just enough control, throw again control. He did it perfect. All right, here we go with our next round. And DC, you've spoken a lot about ground and pound skills and how it's a little bit of a lost art in modern day mixed martial arts. Certainly not for this one. No, and he does it in the old school way, right? Yeah. Now, nowadays, you push a guy to the side of the outside and use it as a barrier to get up. Right. Not with this guy. He stuffs your head in the corner, he gains his posture, and he just starts dropping hammers, dropping hammers until eventually you're gonna turn to your knees, he'll take you neck and choke you, or he'll just put you back down. It's it's crazy to watch him dictate his opponent's actions with his power from this position. Not many guys can generate that type of power. You gotta go back to guys like Mark Munoz. We used to call him the Filipino smashing machine yeah. because he was so good with his ground and pound. He's hurt bad, he's hurt bad, John. He's gotta press him. He's gotta go chase that finish down now. All right, half guard position for him here, and I can hear Dominic Cruz in the back of my head just screaming about underhooks somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. he loved, I mean, but he's right, right? He's so right in terms of if you're on your back in the half guard, one thing you can't be is flat on your back, you need to be up on an elbow, right. you need to be half working on a guillotine. Shots from the top. Pretty good work with the strikes here off of his back by Ortega. Man, look how flexible those legs are. He's got him in rubber guard. I don't think I could do that if I saw him. I mean, John, don't sell yourself short. You just might be able to do it. But if you do, John, you're doing it with the idea that you're slowing everything right. down as a defensive fighter. There are submissions, right? There are submissions, but they're very rare submissions that we don't see used very often in the UFC. Now the guy's got on bar, he's attacking it on him. Attacking on bar. Oh, we're getting a finish here. And he's out. Right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Might be a submission attempt here, champ. I mean, you cannot sit in a full guard. When you sit in the full guard, you give these guys so many opportunities. 30 seconds to go in this one. 20 seconds left. Ortega's pass attempt denied. In the books, we are headed to the championship rounds. Looking good. Looking good. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's take a look back at some of the replays from that last round. Unbelievable to see these high-level competitors get in each other's face, tuck their chin, bite down on the mouth guard, and just let it all hang out over the course of five minutes. We have arrived at the fourth round fight scheduled for five fights. A play shot there, DC. He is officially rough. A big, massive hook that really has put his opponent on skates. Oh, straight right. Oh, just out of range with that right hand. All right, so he's landed some good shots. You hate to be overly critical, but nothing really in terms of combinations to Well, the jab has been looking great. So how about jab, jab, right hand? Because eventually you're going to have to put something on your opponent that's going to really make him pause. I believe the jab has been working so well that if he drops a big right hand after it, he may be able to finish his fight. Ortega gets caught. That offering DC, he is hurt. What a beautiful uppercut. It landed beautifully. Perfect placement on that shot. And he oh, comes nice through with a big knee. Really start to apply pressure on his hip tosses him down. Now we'll see if he can advance position. I mean, right into side control. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. All right, working inside the now open guard of his opponent. Uh oh, throwing up a triangle. The guy on his back is very good at submissions, and if he's not careful here, he's going to get stuck, and he will have to submit. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom player. All right, half guard position here. We'll see what he can do with it. A lot of weapons at his disposal from this dominant position. Oh, man. I feel for a wrestler, this is the most dominant position in all of fighting because wrestlers love control. Right. And to have your upper body free and your leg able to hold your opponent in position, it is like striking gold. Build your posture, throw your punches, big damage, but then always control the far side. Underhook, this is a great position for a top fight. Pretty good work with the ground and pound here by Ortega. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Oh, man, that cut is nasty. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round, saved by the bell. So back to the stool, mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. If he gets hit with another one of those, it might be good night, Irene. Fifth and final round. Well, he continues to land a high number of strikes here, just like he did in the previous round. This is a world-class display of striking here tonight. Right hand upstairs. How about that shin? Looked like he might have landed there. Instead, a swing and a miss by T-City, Brian Ortega. Right punches there. Take more of these leg kicks, you will not be able to be very happy. Holy smokes, he put him to sleep. Now he's on top of him looking for a finish. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. 
Good movement by him here, transitioning very well on the ground tonight. Step for step, he's staying with his opponent in every transition. Ortega's got a bruise starting to appear on that right side of his body now. All right, he continues to bully his opponent here, really manhandling him on the ground. Under three minutes to decide this one. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Well, you know he's comfortable fighting off his back. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. All right, well, he continues to manhandle him here on the ground. Now maybe trying to get to a choke position here, DC. All right, side control now. Down into his mouth. Squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen some really good ground and pound fighters. This young man is as good as any we've ever seen. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage off. One minute to go in the fight. Five seconds remain in the round. Work to get back in the guard now. Move those hits. 30 seconds now to go in the fight. Well, working pretty effectively from the top here. Nice ground and pound by Volkanovski. He's putting him in exactly the position he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. All right, so a competitive title fight tonight, Daniel, as many expected. 25 minutes, not enough to determine a winner. Slight lean to the champion or what? I do believe he's still champion, but that's why he's the champion. Because when the challenges are the biggest, he usually will step up. All right, it looks like the official decision is in. Yes, here's Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest. 48-47. Played the winner by unanimous decision. And still! Full 25 minutes, but in the end, the champion goes out the way he came in. Still the hunted at 145 pounds. Congratulations to the still undisputed UFC featherweight champion of the world.